I would now like to welcome Senator Harris L. Walford, Jr. to the podium, please. Senator. Now you stay here. He's going to be I will, I will yeah. Harris L. Walford, Jr., statesman, educator, champion of the social good. Your career has spanned institutions and continents. As co-founder of the Peace Corps and AmeriCorps, a U.S. Senator, and president of two colleges, you are the epitome of a public servant. You volunteered for service in World War, in World War I, uh, World War II, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have advised three presidents and co-authored the legislation creating the Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. In all these arenas and more, you have led by modeling civic, civic engagement, global awareness, and action for the public's welfare. Arcadia University shares these values, equality, justice, and learning. We are most proud to count you among our alumni and award you the degree of Doctor of Laws. Congratulations. I am particularly pleased to read this copy. Next to me stands a great patriot, a great American, and a good friend. Upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the Board of Trustees of Arcadia University, I now confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctors of Laws with all the rights, privileges thereto appertaining. Senator, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Gallagher. I feel very lucky to, be, to have the honor of claiming membership in the great class of 2011 of Arcadia University. Thanks for letting me join your ranks. Uh, I also want to thank you for singing together the Star Spangled Banner. I've gotten tired of having it sung to me and when I was uh, leading the domestic Peace Corps, AmeriCorps, uh, I made a habit of starting the opening of farewells or swearing-in ceremonies, singing together America the Beautiful. And the first time I did it, one of the, a group of, of the AmeriCorps members came up and said, I hope you weren't embarrassed that we didn't know all the words. Our generation doesn't sing together, we listen. And I'm glad to know that Arcadia University students, uh, they don't just listen and learn, uh, they sing and learn, and they learn by doing and learn by teaching. And you're going forth into a world that needs that and it needs you. Now, my uh, university now includes Google. And I thought Arcadia was a beautiful sounding name. And then somebody said, well, it's a part of Greece. And I said, well, I think we can do better than that, however good that is. And Google tells me that in Renaissance art, Arcadia was the name of a special place, somewhere to be found, which was unspoiled, harmonious, a wilderness. And Virgil, long before that, took the myth of Ar Argots, uh, and Arcadia for him was an idyllic paradise. Now, I don't really suppose uh, that you, uh, I, uh, there's no reason to expect that any college or a university would be an idyllic paradise, or that uh, the only characteristic of this class of 2011 is that you're unspoiled, harmonious, and in a wilderness. <laughs> but you're in a very interesting world. And I'm not just inflicting my own uh, educational experience on you, though you should beware of that. Uh, I, I don't remember World War I, but I, 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 no, but I am four score and five years. And that shows how old I am 
but it also shows how young America is. America in the world is still very, very young. And the, the, it's, I guess, my lesson out of my past is to, to assure you that you are earlier than you think. And America, in terms of its leadership and participation in the world, is in it, uh, for America, it's earlier than we tend to think. Now, uh, 50 years ago, I was lucky uh, to be with Sergeant Shriver and an assistant to President Kennedy in helping to launch the Peace Corps. Uh, 200,000 men and women have gone forth to more than 100 countries. Uh, the country I later left the White House staff to go and live in with my wife and two children, and, um, and then three children, uh, was Ethiopia and Eritrea, one land. And there's an Eritrea Aramis uh, who is graduating in your midst today, um, along with other students from afar. Um, I, I went forth to Ethiopia where we had 400, and Eritrea, where we had 400 Peace Corps volunteers, doubling the number of secondary school students in those lands. And uh, looking at the women here, uh, I, I want to say how many of the women pioneers of the Peace Corps have said to me that we hope our teaching was good, but the biggest teaching we did was the example of independent women going to far places in the world and going to work, rolling up their sleeves. In this case, all of them were teaching. And the impact on other uh, women in the provincial towns, the impact on the students, the faculty teaching there uh, who were not Peace Corps volunteers, uh, the impact was enormous. And one of the great continuing revolutions in the world is the revolution of women and women's rights, along with the continuing revolution, peaceful, we hope, of integration, uh, integration of men and women into the same institutions, and integration of the white, western, generally wealthy world into a world that's largely colored, is still largely poor, and a, a world that is waiting for your talent, your compassion, your idealism, your energy. Now, when the Peace Corps was launched, President Kennedy said, the Peace Corps is a venture, a great venture in American education. It is going to educate Americans. It's going to educate people of other world countries. Uh, it is a university in dispersion. And in do go doing so, it will help American universities become what now they need to become, world universities. And I'm honored to be in a college that has committed itself, that has set, also set forth on a big journey, a journey to be a world university. I see it on your walls. I see it in your literature. I see it in global service studies, uh, global studies, and the ratio of uh, foreign students here that aren't foreign anymore. Um, you're on your way. Arcadia is on the way, and you're about to go on your way out into this world of very special challenges. I would roll those challenges into one, that there's a new reality in the world. I think it began to set in with the atomic bomb. Uh, it was John Kennedy's first proposition of the inaugural address that Man now holds in his more mortal hands the ability to end all poverty in the world and the ability to destroy all human life in the world. And then when we set forth to go to the moon, we were starting an adventure into space. The real unspoiled wilderness is the vast expanses of space, which in due course we will continue our adventures in. The new reality uh, is a reality in which all of the greatest and hardest and most promising problems in the world to tackle are ultimately or in some major degree 
world problems, whether it's international terrorism or international development or diseases that know no borders, um, you name the problem and it's a world problem. And that's why the journey that Arcadia is on is the right journey for American education. My only advice along the way would be add to the dimension of studying abroad or foreign students studying here the additional form of studying and learning, which is by serving, by action, by going to work in, in another land or in across cultural frontiers of this land. So it's earlier than you think. Now, one of my high points of going to Bryn Mawr College uh, more than uh, 40 years ago, uh, my, my high point was the day that I had succeeded in persuading Bryn Mawr's star graduate, Catherine Hepburn, to come to the college um, and talk to the senior class. She wouldn't give a commencement talk. She wouldn't accept an honorary degree. But she would come and sit down on a table and for hours talk with the senior class. But when she burst into our home for lunch when she arrived, she said, oh, what a wonderful start I had today. I went out on to the streets of New York to find my car and to drive down to Bryn Mawr. And a woman came up and stuck her finger at me and said, I know who you are. And I said, who? And she said, Joan Crawford who had died six months before. <laughs> and Catherine Hepburn said, I looked her in the eye and said, I'm not yet, I'm not, not yet, I'm not. And that's what I mean by it's earlier than you think. And the good luck I wish you comes from my heart. Good luck in all the dimensions of your learning and service and action and personal happiness. And remember, as Arcadia is saying in so many ways that the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness that the Declaration of Independence declared for a right of all people. Uh, Adams and Thomas Jefferson uh, agreed on the 50th anniversary of the Dec Declaration of Independence, the day they both died that day, far apart. They had just agreed that the happiness that they had in mind was, of course, personal happiness of family and work and nature and recreation and what have you, personal happiness. But it was above all for them the public happiness of participating in your own self-government. So I wish you there's sometimes when personal and public happiness come together. I trust that's today, and I wish you good luck. Thank you.